Hello and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. This time I want to talk a little bit about focus stacking and I just want to show you the easiest and quickest way to do this in Photoshop. So why do we use focus stacking? As you can see here, I have a macro image of some random flower of my backyard. You can see the front of the flower is fully in focus while the back is completely out of focus. And in this case, there is no way I can get everything of this flower in focus with a single image, no matter which camera settings I will be using here. So for focus stacking, as the name suggests, we do use multiple images with different focal points and we are just going to stack them together. And the more precise you're doing this, the better the results you will get. So if we flip through the images down here, you can see I'm very slowly shifting the focus more and more to the back of the flower until everything was in focus at least once. In this case, that means I have shot 13 different images. So let's get started. This video will be split into three parts. The first one being the basic raw adjustments for all those images. The second part will be the focus stacking in Photoshop. And then the third part will be finishing the post-processing of this image. So let's go. As you can see, I'm in the camera raw editor and I first need to do the editing for one image. So first off, I want to activate the remove chromatic aberration setting and I also want to check the profile corrections. And then let's go back to the basic panel. Right away, I think the colors do look a little bit too cold in my opinion. So I'm just going with a cloudy white balance setting, which will slightly warm up everything. At the moment, the image is a little bit overexposed for my taste. So let's just bring down the exposure. And I also want to bring down the highlights, which will restore a lot of details in those droplets. And let's add some contrast by bringing down the shadows. Okay, then to not lose too much brightness, I'm increasing the whites. And for a soft look, I'm also increasing the blacks. Okay, that looks really nice already. Now, I really want to have a lot of texture and sharpness in those flowers. And to start this, I'm introducing some texture and some clarity as well. Usually I wouldn't go this high, but I think it's okay for macro images to do this. And finally, let's bring down the ribbons just a little bit. Okay. For this shot, I don't want to use any local adjustments. I want to head straight to the color grading. So let's start in the color mixer tab. Under the hue settings, I want to boost the orange hue a little bit. And I actually want to drop the yellows all the way down as well as the greens and those two will just affect the background of the image since as you can see in the before version it's a very saturated green and i don't think that works nicely with those flowers in the foreground so that's much better then in the saturation tab let's drop the red saturation then i'm boosting the orange saturation and I guess I also want to drop the green saturation a bit. Okay, nice. Then let's also apply a little bit of split toning. That just means I want to work on the shadows by adding a cold color tone to them. Somewhere in this range. Let's bring down the saturation though. And in this case, I also want to bring down the luminance just to make the shadows a little darker. All right, that looks awesome. Now let's add a little bit of vignetting in the effects tab and just bring this down. And this will pull the focus more on the flower, which is exactly what we want here. Now some final color grading in the calibration tab. Yeah, I just play around with the hue a little bit. That means I'm going to drop the green primary hue and I'm boosting the blue primary hue just to get some nicer colors going on here. All right. And finally, I want to sharpen this image. 
And in the sharpening panel, the masking is really important since by using this, I can stop the sharpening to be applied from the background just like that. So now that we have the raw adjustments for the first image, of course, we want to have the same settings on all the other images so they stack nicely together. That means I'm holding down the shift key and click on the last image in the series. So I have selected them all then right click, synchronize settings, check all and hit OK. And now let's open them up in Photoshop. With all the images opened up in Photoshop, we now want to place all of them into one single Photoshop file. I am sure there's a much easier and faster way. If you know that way, please let me know in the comments because it would save me so much time, but I'm doing this like that. I'm going to an image, then I'm hitting Ctrl A to select everything. Then I'm hitting Ctrl C to copy that image. Go to the previous image and hit Ctrl V to pass it. And you can see now I have two images placed in one Photoshop file and this way I can go through this one by one. All right, and here you can see I have loaded all the images into this Photoshop file. Since the day I shot this was pretty windy, you can see the flower doesn't align perfectly on every image, uh, which is kind of a problem, but actually that's pretty easily fixed. In this case, we're just going to select all the layers right here and let's head over to edit and here we are selecting auto align layers and just hit OK and Photoshop will automatically align the objects in this image. Depending on how many images you want to align, this may take a while, but the results as you can see are excellent. So now that we have aligned all those images, now comes the fun part with the focus stacking. Then again with every layer selected, we want to head to edit once more and then just hit auto blend layers. Here we don't want to create a panoramic image, we want to stack them. So just hit OK again. Again, this process may take a while depending on how many images you want to stack. But for the purpose of stacking macro images, I would highly suggest to stack as many images as possible with different focus points. And here you can see Photoshop has created this merged layer out of all those different layers below it. Since we don't need those right there, we can merge everything just to clean up this file a little bit. And here we have the stacked image, which looks really, really good. You can see everything is sharp from front to back while we have a nice buttery smooth background. And that's it for the focus stacking. You can see this is very easy and very fast. So I hope you will enjoy this method as you try it yourself. But let's continue and finish this image. First, I'm not a big fan of those things in the bottom part of the image that looks really nasty. So let's use the spot healing brush and just clean up this image. Okay, that's much cleaner already. I think the orientation of this flower is kind of distracting. I think it would look better if it faces the other direction. So I'm hitting Ctrl T to bring up the transform window and then I'm right clicking and just select flip horizontal. And I just think it looks a bit more natural this way. All right, next up, I want to darken the background a little bit more. So I'm creating a new layer switch blending mode to overlay and at this point i want to make use of luminosity masks just so i can target the shadows in the background for this reason i'm going to use the tk panel plugin which for whatever reason the icons for it are now hidden which has something to do with the recent photoshop update so this might look a little strange here anyway i want to go with the shadows so i'm creating a dark luminosity mask and I only want to target the background, so this one looks pretty good. Let's apply it. And on this overlay layer, I'm going to paint in with a black brush and just carefully paint over the background. 
and thus we can separate the subject a little more from the background. All right, nice. Then let's merge those two. And now I want to target the midtones of the flower and make them a little brighter. So as you can see, I made a new layer again. And again, I'm going with the overlay blending mode. Then let's click this invisible plugin right there. In this case, let's go with the first midtones right here. And instead of a black brush, I'm going with white since I want to make the midtones brighter. Also, let's drop the brush opacity. Now I'm just brushing in the flower. That looks really, really good. I think that's already enough. Then let's merge those two layers again. And finally, it might be time to check the Nick Collection plugin. Here, let's apply the polarization effect, which will enhance those colors a little more. Just like that. Maybe let's add another filter and let's go with the pro contrast and add a little bit of dynamic contrast. Okay, let's apply it like that. Perfect, and that's it for editing this image. So I hope the focus stacking part was helpful and interesting as well as the rest of the post-processing. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.